I started off uh, with the character designs for Ben and Jack and the tree that he lured the children into with a spider tea. Once I was happy with a more caricatured design of Jack, I began sculpting. I made a wireframe that I'd built up layers of Super Sculpey, which is a modelling material that you bake in your home oven, uh, because having a hard sculpture is easier to mould rather than a plasticine or clay one. Storyboarding is extremely important in animation because you have to build everything that is in shot. Uh, if you lock down what each shot looks like early on, you won't waste time building things that will never be seen. Much of Sewing Machine looks a lot like the storyboard, but I still had quite a few changes, like the accident on the farm where Ben loses his hand used to be from a wood chipper. But like many of the ideas, I came up with the better idea of the pig at 5am and ran with it. Many moulds for puppets are made from blocks of plaster or resin, but because I had uh, undercuts like in the puppets' mouths, I needed to make flexible moulds. I first needed to make a fiberglass case that holds the rubber together and in shape. And to do this, I made about a centimetre covering over the puppet with plasticine and made a flange wall so that the two parts of the case can be bolted together. Then I fiberglassed over the plasticine, making the reverse shape. Then you cover the other side of the puppet and apply a release agent to the fiberglass wall to stop the next layer of fiberglass from bonding to it. Then you'll have two halves of a case. Next you need to fill around the character, creating the void where the first half of the silicon rubber is poured into. Once the rubber is set, you remove the plasticine, apply a release agent like Vaseline to the silicon, assemble the pieces again and pour the other half of the silicon. Now you have two rubber halves supported and held in place by the fiberglass case. The skeleton of the puppets is called an armature and I couldn't afford professional ball and socket armatures so I made twisted wire ones that were glued into balsa wood blocks. Now it's important that you have an accurate set of scales to measure out all the ingredients of the silicon. For some of the puppets I painted catalyzed and pigmented silicon into the mould before casting. Others I painted afterwards. You then position the armature so that the wire jaw, eyebrows and limbs sit nicely where they should I then set them in place with mixed silicon before assembling the mould for the main pore. I used soft copper wire for the fingers, jaw and eyebrows and glued nuts in the feet so that the puppet could be anchored to the set. Then you assemble the mould and cast the bulk of the body. Once cured you open the mould up, trim the edges of the silicon and you've got your finished puppet. Ben's father's arms was all that was needed in shot so that was all that I made. Most of the sets were made with timber and wire covered with plaster, which was then sculpted, sealed and painted. I used hundreds of paddle pop sticks as the floorboards. The biggest set would have been too heavy to ever move if made with plaster, so I used cans of filler foam, which I gave a rough sculpt before smearing a thin layer of plaster over that. The whole production took place between this cluttered room and the garage. I used improvised wire rigs to support puppets on several shots. I felt that this forest set was too flat and light, so I added another hill to the back of the set and on the day of the shoot I used a lot of real branches and leaves to fill the set until it looked like a denser forest. I shot the footage using a Canon 550D, which is an 18 megapixel camera, so you can get great detail. The camera was connected to a computer where I captured the images using Stop Motion Pro, so you never actually touch the camera button, which would move the camera slightly and your footage would look like it was shot during an earthquake. The software also allows you to see a ghost of the previously shot frames, so you know how far the puppet has moved. I shot sewing machine on ones, which means a movement for every frame shot. A lot of animation is shot on twos or 12 frames per second, where you take two pictures for every time you move the puppet. You can even shoot on threes or fours, but the more frames per second, the smoother the movement. For this shot of Jack dancing, I copied the video footage of Steve Poltz dancing as he performs the song live. 
and it turned out to be some of the best animation of the whole video. Animators always study the way things move, and whether you're going for a realistic look or an exaggerated cartoony feel, real footage and photos is the place to start. Then I just had to digitally remove any wire rigs from the shots and I had a movie.